Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and we're going to show you uh, this little bump that was uh, shave biopsied off of someone's shoulder. It's a dermal nodule of um, uh, spindle cells, and has kind of a <clears throat> pink background to it. And I think one thing that you should notice from even low power is look at these little cracks, these little cleft artifact. That's really key to the diagnosis here. Here's the second piece of the shave. You can see the same thing here, just smaller. Let's look closer. It's made of bland spindle cells that are very uniform in um, uh, shape. <clears throat> and if you have a little experience with pathology, you probably will look at that and say, that has kind of a neural look. They look like Schwann cells, and that's because they are Schwann cells. And they're Schwann cells that are arranged in these kind of fascicles and bundles, and the bundles are separated from each other by this, this clefting artifact, this, this space here that's splitting them apart, okay? So um, one thought you might have is neurofibroma, but the thing here that separates us from neurofibroma is that clefting artifact and the, the bundle and fascicle formation. You can really see it here. So this is called a palisaded encapsulated neuroma, also known as a solitary circumscribed neuroma. Both of those names are accepted. They, even though the name says palisaded encapsulated, they don't usually have a really nice capsule. They are usually pretty circumscribed, but not always. And they don't always have a real good capsule. And um, the other thing about them is the palisading is sometimes really nice, but other times it's quite subtle. So I feel like palisading is one of those things when you see a beautiful varicae bodies in a schwannoma, no problem telling it's palisading. These cells are palisading. See how those are kind of arranged in rows right there? That's a little row. That's a little row right there. It's hard to even move the mic. My, the, um, the arrow to let you see it. Here's like a little row of cells. So those are all little palisades. They're just very subtle palisades. So seeing subtle palisading and seeing these bundles of uh, Schwann cells and these clefting artifact, that solitary circumscribed neuroma or palisaded encapsulated neuroma, these are benign neural um, tumors and they most commonly occur on the face, like the lip um, is a good side of the cheek, sometimes the nose, and they get biopsy because clinically they're a little pearly bump. They look like a basal cell carcinoma clinically. And most of the time when these are sent in, um, the, the dermatologist uh, has a suggested clinical diagnosis of rule out basal cell. So um, that's why we end up seeing them. They're totally benign. And it's just a nice little, uh, little thing to find and, um, um, and they're quite cute to look at. Sometimes they can be multinodular and plexiform, and it's real important to not confuse that with, say, plexiform uh, neurofibroma which of course is associated with neurofibromatosis type 1. These are not associated with uh, neurofibromatosis. Um, when you have a solitary um, one of these, it's uh, no problem at all and no, no further treatment needed. So um, uh, the other thing too is that because of the palisading, uh, you can sometimes think that these might be a schwannoma. Um, if you think that you have a schwannoma in the dermis, it is much more likely that what you're actually dealing with is solitary circumscribed neuroma, palisaded encapsulated neuroma, this entity. These are way, way more common. Um, um, I do soft tissue pathology in addition to Dermpath, and I can probably count on one hand the number of times I've seen a true intradermal schwannoma. They are quite rare. I see schwannomas all the time. They just are almost always in the subcutis or deep soft tissue or next to the nerve roots of the spine, somewhere like that, retroperitoneum, not usually in the dermis. So it's not impossible, but it's very uncommon. So um, if you think it looks like a schwannoma in the dermis, probably you're dealing with a pen. And um, I think that's everything that, for this little entity that you should know about. There can also be mucin in the background, mixoid change in the spaces, which is typical of, of all neural uh, proliferations. You can sometimes have mixoid change in the background. And of course, you can have random scattered nuclear uh, hyperchromasia or even a little touch of pleomorphism in uh, any neural tumor. So um, if you need an update on schwannomas, neurofibromas, neurofibromatosis, I have videos, full length videos about those, and I'll put a description in the comment section, or I'm sorry, in the video description below, I'll put links. And um, if you like this, please like and subscribe to the channel. And also um, let me know if you like these short rapid fire videos about random things that I run across in um, daily sign out. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.